Welcome, welcome. It's September 14th, and at least in my world, I think it's September 15th for people in Australia and that part of the world, but it's good to have you all here for the um, video meeting with Cecilio Rodojo. Um, it's just lovely to have you all here. My name is Leslie Nips. I'm your host um, for today. I'm in Oakland, California, and uh, I was co-director of the 2015 um, North American Systemic Constellations Conference in San Diego a couple of years ago. Um, and this year I am hosting these conversations with various uh, folk who are going to be um, working with us at the conference in various ways. Uh, I'm also offering a workshop myself on nature constellations, having followed up with Irma and Harvey and Jose um, and all of the hurricanes and the fact that Virginia Beach is known as one of the centers for um, climate change in the United States. That's going to be an interesting topic. Um, and I'm really delighted to be hosting these events for you all and introducing you to some of these really wonderful people. Let me just say a couple of words about Zoom for you, those of you who are new to it before I invite Cecilio to um, uh, introduce himself. Um, uh, the, for those of you who are on a laptop, um, if you're on an iPad or a phone, the configuration is a little different. You'll have to find these for yourself. But if you're on a laptop or a computer, you'll find in the bottom left a couple of toggles for muting or to kind of mute your video. Some people have, like Amanda has her video muted right now. Um, I am have you all on mute right now. Um, just because on Zoom, if we all have everybody's little tiny background noise, it becomes like a, a hurricane a little bit. So we got you all on mute, except for myself and Cecilio. Um, and we'll unmute you um, when it's time for some questions. The other thing just to make note of, um, on the bottom for most of you is the chat function. Uh, the chat function is something that you can use to privately say hello to a friend. Or if Cecilio says something you think is especially brilliant, you can write, I agree with that. Um, or it's a way to also post questions in time. Now, Karen Carnabucci has just demonstrated the use of the chat. Thank you very much, Karen. Um, and uh, so sometimes Cecilio and I will be kind of in a role and a question comes up for you that you want to um, get on the record. So put it into the chat right then. And we, it may be a few minutes before I get to those questions, but I will get to them, okay? So it's a great way to sort of be in the process with Cecilio. The last one I just want to invite you to take a look at, again, on computers upper right, there's a little toggle. It goes from speaker view to gallery view. It's in the upper right-hand corner. Most of you will want to be on gallery view because it gives you the opportunity to see everybody. Um, on the other hand, if you have speaker view on, then the person who's speaking, who right now is me, um, is the biggest person on Zoom. Um, and when Cecilio speaks, he'll be the biggest person, okay? Um, but most of you will want to be looking at the gallery view so you can see everybody, okay? So that's my little introduction to Zoom. It's important for you all to know we are recording this and we will be sharing it. So um, please be advised in terms of your questions and shares that this is being recorded and will be shared. Okay, so let's launch in. Cecilio, it's so good to see you again. I last saw you in Zagreb last year. Uh, what fun it was at the ISCA gathering. Could you please introduce yourself to the group uh, a little bit for people who don't know you? Okay, thank you very much Leslie, for uh, producing all this uh, video. And um, I, I would say that uh, my background is all from business. Um, all my life was I'm a, an engineering, a mechanical engineering. And, uh, but uh, all, all my life was about business and uh, I have a lot of companies that I create, I, I sold, uh, I, uh, I, I bought, uh, so in, in very different uh, areas. Until some, uh, I would say, 15 years ago or something like that, I was a little fed up of uh, all the business and I decided to sell all my companies. 
So it was a good uh, move to do it because it was before the crisis. So I could do a, a good many uh, in order to um, try to do another thing. I like to, to do something completely different. And I was looking for uh, different things than so I couldn't have uh, many people working with me and uh, all the financial and all that. And I w was experiencing a lot of things until I arrived to Family Constellations. And so the first experience I have with Family Constellations, I didn't like a lot. Uh, it was uh, very strange for me, a lot of people crying. I never cried before as a businessman. And, um, but anyhow, I get uh, involved uh, some months later. I was starting a family uh, constellation training and some months later I knew that uh, there was uh, organization constellations. I couldn't understand how it was possible to do the, the work I saw in family constellations in companies, but I was curious and so I went to Holland, that was the first uh, uh, training in organization constellation organized by Jan Jakob. And uh, since the first day, I was completely in love. So since then, uh, I was, uh, I, I tried to train myself in family and in organization constellations. But my life now is uh, very centered on uh, organization constellation, mainly doing training in uh, a lot of uh, countries all over the world, uh, working with um, companies and uh, still loving uh, a lot this work. Awesome. That's really great. I just love hearing your story. That's terrific. And, and I'm curious, I, I, I know a few people on this call, uh, Betsy in particular, and maybe some others who really um, work in the area of organizational constellations. But I know that many people on the call don't. Um, mm -hmm. And so could you just say a few words about the difference? I mean, family constellations and organizational constellations are both constellations work. But are there some ways in which they're different that are important? Uh, yes, I would say that uh, perhaps if we start with constellations, they are all different. Uh, it changed the facilitator. So the, the big change is that for me is the facilitator. And is the philosophy how we look to the client and what, what uh, to do. Mainly on organization constellations. Um, I, I, I like to give a small uh, sentence uh, so people in companies can, can understand what, uh, what we do. That I say that the client has access to information that he, he knows, but he doesn't know he knows. Mm. And that is a sentence quite difficult to, it was difficult for me to find, but now it's quite easy for people, for normal people in companies to uh, to understand and, and, and the idea is how can we give them more information so they can decide better mm. the point with uh, family constellations and organizational is that mainly we try not to go to the uh, personal uh, issues even we know that everything is mixed so that uh, sometimes it, it has to be an art. If we are uh, working with uh, big companies, it's quite easy to do just, uh, I would say, a pure uh, organizational constellation. But if, if we are uh, working with small companies that are most of the companies, there is always a mix uh, your personal issues with the um, company's issues. So the way um, is uh, how can we work even with personal issues, but with a lot of confidentiality and just the work can be done uh, inside of the client and now and not outside. This is uh, if we work in group or if we work in, in a company. If we work individual with the manager, that is different. We can uh, go a little, a little further. But uh, the main thing is for me is how can we protect the client because the work we do even if we do it in a, in a company uh, we don't have to forget that we are going to the company for uh, one day or one morning 
but they, uh, the client stays there. So it, we have to be very careful of what we are doing and what we are uh, exposing. Mm. And one thing that is, I think it's important in, in, in organizational constellations is that we don't need to do a big, big work uh, with uh, a start and then, and then end uh, in a way that um, people in companies are very uh, used to decide. So what they want is to have more information so they can decide better. So sometimes, uh, I would say even a lot of times, uh, when I go in a constellation and I think I'm in, uh, at, at half of the constellation, the client says, we can stop here, it's enough for me. So they are very, really very quick to understand and what they want is to have information. Uh, sometimes it's the facilitator that wants to give more than we ha have to, to do. And it's really also important to understand that the client of organization, uh, perhaps it's not so prepared to understand uh, the deepness of, uh, of a constellation. So perhaps we have to do small things that at that time it can be very deep for the client. So we have to, to see with with which client we are working with. Mm -hmm. and, and that leads me to my next question. And I, before I do that, I just, again, I want to remind people about the chat function. Feel free as Cecilia and I are talking a little bit, if a question arises, just type it into the chat function. I know some of you are on a phone that's not as accessible to you. Uh, we'll probably open it up more to more questions uh, a little bit later on, but do make use of the chat function. Um, Cecilia, that makes me think, um, when we were in Zagreb, I, I found your, your presentations incredibly useful. And um, the focus there, and I think part of what you're going to bring to the conference, if I've read your workshop title correctly, is a particular kind of focus on the client, which you're kind of referring to right here. Um, and it can be a little bit different than sometimes what we learn about or hear about in more conventional family constellation context. So could you say a little bit more about um, what your focus on the client is and what you're trying to do in your relationship with the client? Um, the point that is in, in constellations, we talk a lot about that the client is the most important in the, this whole process. That's what everybody says, but it's not what everybody does. <laughs> Uh, and uh, sometimes uh, people are more concerning on the technique of the constellation and to find a good solution, uh, perhaps sometimes for the facilitator. In, in, in my opinion, I don't like solutions. So when I work with the client, I don't work on solutions. I work, I, I work more on information. So it's, 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 I always say that I, I like to work on uh, to find a way to a possible solution than to give a solution to the client. Because if we have a problem, we have a lot of uh, different solutions. That's only the client that can, uh, can do it. So the, the point is, how can we uh, give all the responsibility of the client for his process? The constellations is something that it takes for, I would say, half an hour to one half one and a half hour. So it's very little uh, time. But the client stays with all the information. And it's the client that has to implement whatever he saw in the constellation, whatever he feels in the, in the, in the constellations. So the, the, the main point is how can we uh, help the client to implement what he saw, knowing that as, as a facilitator, we don't see anything. We don't see what the client is seeing. Uh, and that for me is really very important because sometimes we think that we know what is the dynamic between uh, behind the, the client and we don't know. Nobody can be inside of the client. But we can help the client to do what he must do, but what he wants to do. So the, the point is, how can we do uh, some process 
in order that the client is less dependent on the facilitator and is only dependent on him. So the work is mostly on uh, responsibility. So to responsabilize the client for his process. Uh, sometimes the clients uh, ask us uh, what we think, uh, uh, and we, we, we cannot give that answer. Even we have also, we have a lot of opinions, of course, but we have to help the client to do it. In a way, uh, what I'm going to try uh, to do in the, in, in the workshop is to go a little uh, deeper on this and uh, mainly try to uh, transmit uh, some of my philosophy on the interview, how to interview a client in order to uh, give him more responsibility and that uh, all the work will be, will be done by him, not by us. Thank you. And Rachel uh, just offered a question in the chat and I see your question as well, Amanda, I'll get to it in a moment. But uh, Rachel has my question, which is, um, can you give us an example? Um, uh, the way she says it of some small things that help the client in organizational constellations or, or a story perhaps of um, how constellation work has helped one of your clients in an organization. Um, and I know that always puts people on the spot. <laughs> you have to yeah. think of something. Yeah, it's, um, I, I'm switching with uh, an email I received today of a client I, I work with. It, it was a really interesting uh, case and it was um, some, a consultation that I did in, in, in Brazil that changed my mind about the, um, the successors. Uh, so, uh, um, I don't know if I say it correctly in English. So, when um, the father, uh, a son, is going to uh, be the next uh, manager of the company. Right, a and family that, company, yeah. Yeah, and that is always a big, uh, a big problem that uh, normally the father says, Oh, I, I want to give you the, the company, I want to rest, but in a way they don't rest. They stay in the company, uh, they say, give a good, uh, uh, put the, the son as the president, <clears throat> but uh, he cannot act as the president. And normally, uh, what I, I used to say with a lot of, of people that I work with that, and I thought that before, it was that um, to change that, we need to work with the father in order to know if he really wants to leave the company or not. And uh, in that constellation, I discovered that it's not uh, necessary. We can uh, work with the, with the son uh, in order that the son can show the father that he can do it. Mm. And the point really is that normally uh, as, as parents, we see our children always as children. So I will not leave my company to a child. If uh, my son still is uh, showing himself as a child, I, I will not do it. So in, in that constellation, it was really very interesting because we work with uh, the son uh, in order that he could uh, put in, in his place of, of man, of adult, and show that he uh, was an adult. And when uh, we did the, a process with him, and when we did that, the representative of the father changed immediately mm -hmm. and get away of the company. And really was, uh, was really very, very interesting, and I have, uh, after that, uh, other constellations like this, and it was really interesting, um, the results. And, and, and today I received an email from um, a girl uh, that I worked with her like that. He, she's going to be the president of the, of the company. And uh, we did the constellation one year before, and she was relating me all the changes she 
and she did. And it was really interesting um, how she could do it, but it was, the work was, was essentially working on her, on putting her in a different position so the father could see uh, a lady, not uh, a girl. Mm, yeah, yeah, a woman, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it reminds us that this, this cliche we say all the time, which isn't always applied, but it's showing through in your story that this is a phenomenological method, right? That, that sorry, sorry. Um, in English, phenomenological yes. Uh, yes, um, yes 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 yeah um mm -hmm. that we're supposed to be looking at at the field for the information and that's a really good example of you feeling like you had a principle and then it showed you something different yeah but uh, that i can discuss also in the in the, in the in the in the workshop about uh, the the field because I, I don't believe a lot on the field okay good uh, as it is I like to be a little provocative, or I, I, I like to to see the the field in a different in a different way, because I don't see that the field uh, is there in front of us. I think that the client cr creates the field. Yeah. And as we are working with the client, the client is open uh, some places where we can go in his own field, and uh, that is. Um, an, exp an experiment that I, I will do in the workshop that uh, you saw, I think you saw it in Zagreb, mm -hmm. um, about to do a constellation for everybody to, so people can understand uh, that. And, and, we, and when you understand that, you see uh, the real power of the client, not the power of the constellation. Mm. That's why I, 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 I normally say that I don't believe in constellations. I only believe on the client. For me, the client is who can do the work because sometimes we do very excellent uh, constellations that the client is very happy, I'm very happy, uh, the participants are very happy, and uh, one year after, everything is at the same place. Yeah. And sometimes we do a bad constellation uh, with uh, no energy, and um, six months after, we, we saw a big changes on, on, on the client. Who did that? It's always the client. It's never the constellation. The, the constellation is a really good tool so people can uh, feel and, and can see uh, different uh, things, but the decisions and the actions must be done by the, by the clients. Not, it's not the constellation that will work alone. Mm -hmm. Uh, Amanda asks this question, and again, feel free to put in questions into the chat function if you're having them as we, we talk. Um, uh, this is kind of goes back to something you were saying much earlier in the conversation. Can you say a bit more about discerning between the personal and the organizational? Um, and I'll just add on, because sometimes they do overlap, right? So, no, no, it's not, uh, it's not sometimes, it's always. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> for me, for me, okay. for me, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's always. Uh, the point is that when you are in a constellation, you have uh, hundreds of dynamics. Yeah. So you can go more for, uh, and that is the, the, um, the work of the constellator. Um, you can go more for the organizational uh, than for the, the, for the personal, but it's always it's always mixed. But the point I, I, I think it's it's here uh, an interesting point that um, sometimes we think when we, for instance, interview a general manager, and we see that there are some uh, things in his family systems that could be that we would uh, work in order he could be a good a better manager. And uh, that is true, of course, but the manager didn't ask us that. And that, that's important what uh, the people, the client ask us. So if they ask to go only to organization, we have to go only to organization. But what is interesting is that uh, we are systemic people. 
So, and um, all the systems between uh, inside of us are mixed. We cannot uh, split organizational, personal, individual, uh, family. It's all uh, inside of us. So as, as we are systemic, I, I, I had some um, uh, interesting examples about uh, working only on the organizational feeling, uh, on the organization feel, uh, how to put a manager uh, uh, in another position uh, with uh, all the employees, uh, getting a, a better position in the company so he could manage uh, better the company. And sometime after, I talked with him and he said, I don't know what happens, but um, in my family, the things are going much better than before. Mm. So it's not, uh, for me, it's not, uh, we don't need to go uh, first family and after organization because we are systemic. It's, uh, and it's really very interesting. It's, it, it doesn't matter where we touch the client. Yeah. Because we're, uh, if we touch the client in, when, in an arm, uh, the heart will know or the head will know. Yeah. And, yeah. and sometimes we think that uh, before it comes to the past and after the future, uh, but sometimes working in the future, it solves some things on, on, on the past. And that's really uh, quite interesting. Yeah. It, it reminds me one time years ago with a client, she... She, she wanted uh, to improve her relationship with her mother. So we focused on that. And two weeks later, she said, you know, things haven't changed much with mom, but things with dad are a lot better. And yeah, she, yeah, 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 yeah. she considered that a good outcome. So <laughs> um, sometimes, uh, like you say, we, the client knows, but doesn't know they know. Um, yeah. um, and sometimes the outcome is different than the outcome we think we want. Yeah, that's, a, that, that, that's why we have to respect a lot the, the client. Yeah. And uh, we have to try not to guess what is best for the client because we don't know. Uh, perhaps he doesn't know also, but um, uh, our, 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 our role um, as constellator and the world uh, is facilitated. We are facilitating a process to the client. Just that. We are not giving solutions. We are not uh, giving anything to the client. Just facilitating a process so he can see what is possible to see at that moment and, uh, and at that place. Um, are there more questions from the group? Um, you can either type something in. Oh, Connie just wrote a long one. Good for you. Um, thank you, Cecilio. When you say that it's always the client and never the constellation, can't the constellation shift something for the client so they can do something differently that they wouldn't have access to without doing the constellation? And then she says, hopefully this makes sense. Uh, do you need help from Connie? Um, I can unmute her and she can, uh, you can ask her directly. Yes, perhaps it's better. Connie, uh, restate that. I've unmuted you. So when you say that it's always, it's always the client and never the constellation, if a client can't sometimes the constellation shift something for the client so that they actually can do something differently that they wouldn't have had maybe the access to that energy or that thinking um, had they not done the constellation. Does that make yes, sense? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. But uh, in, in, in a way, you are saying the same thing I, I, I do and about the process of the constellation. It changed something on the client. Of course, uh, any constellation changed something on the, on the client. Uh, but the action must be done by the client. Uh, it's, 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 for me, it's really important. It's not the constellation that is... Uh, uh, sometimes um, when we see a constellation, it, it looks like it is uh, magic. And I don't like uh, very much the, the word magic because magic is uh, to say something that we don't understand. And uh, I prefer, uh, instead of telling that the constellation is magic, I prefer to say that the client is magic. Ah. And, and I'm really sometimes very surprised what, what what happens with the client and what the client does. 
But the real magician of all this process is not the facilitator. Even they, they say a lot of good things about us. But the real magician is the client. And the client, uh, it's the only one that can change his life. If we could change uh, the life of people, uh, we would be very powerful people. And we are simple human people. Nothing else than that. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Connie. Yes. Um, other questions from the group? Um, you can just raise your hand like this. I will unmute uh, the phone just because on the phone you can't raise your hand. <laughs> Uh, we've got one from Clet Kim. Um, thank you, Cecilia. When you're doing organizational constellations, do you work with the client's ancestral field? And if so, how? And again, I will unmute Kim in case Cecilia needs to follow up. Oop. Um, needs to follow up, follow up with Kim at all. Do you have the question, Cecilia? You, I, I'm, I'm worried you're freezing a little. Not to go to the ancestral. Hold on one second, Cecilia. We're we're getting a little freeze of you. Hmm. Oops. This happens from time to time. Um. You are frozen right now, Cecilia. Yeah. Yes. Um. Raise your hand if you think Leslie's frozen. Now it's, it's better? Mm -hmm. No, raise your hand if you think Cecilia's frozen. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, try and talk, talk mm -hmm. Cecilia. I'm frozen only for you. <laughs> oh, now you're here, you're back. Uh, ah, okay, okay, okay. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so, um, I, try, I try not to go to the, to the ancestral field. Uh, because, um, how can I say that? Uh, I think that uh, if we can talk of the ancestral field, the ancestral field is inside of the client. So I, 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 I like to work with, with the client. And so, so how can we uh, get from the client all the strength he has? And um, when we talk about the uh, ancestral field or uh, a lot of things of from, from, from the past, uh, sometimes we give an excuse to the client uh, that he couldn't do because of his uh, past of, of, of his uh, ancestors. But the point is that all those ancestors, what did, did the good person he is. So with all that the person is at this moment, even with all the things that was um, wrong that he didn't like, even with all the traumas that the, the, the client has, is what make him strong. And if we, um, he can understand that, he can use all his strength as he did before, to be, so I, I like more to, to work in, in, in the present than uh, in, the, in, in the past. Because I think that in a constellation, we only work uh, on the present. When we go to the past or when we go to the future, for me is we are working with the perception of the client of the past and the perception of the client of the future. So uh, we never changed. It's not possible to change the past. Uh, the client understands that he's unique. He's a, a marvelous person, even with all the things that happen with uh, with him. And with all that he is, he can be better than him. And that's my end with me. So, Cecilia, my apologies, but we're struggling a little bit on this end again. Going through the future. 
We're struggling a little bit. Um, I don't know if there's anything on your end, like if there's someone else on the internet or you have programs running in the background of your computer, but um, this is usually what happens when um, one's internet um, is not uh, very um, stable. Um, so if there's anything on your end that you can um, improve your internet connection. Uh, perhaps. Uh... Or even getting a little closer to your modem, yes, to your router can sometimes be helpful. Yes. You're already improving. Yes? Yeah, it's already getting better. Yes. But I do think we got most of your answer to that last question about staying in the present mm. rather than working mm -hmm. too much in the context of the past. Um, which is, I think, the, the main thing you were trying to say. Kim, do you have a follow-up on that? I still have you unmuted. No, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. And I, my impression is that um, some of this does flow from um, your contract with these people is almost always organizationally connected. Um, yeah. And so your contract with these people is about some outcome for the organization in some way or their relationship to the organization. Um, it's, it, it's probably not very common that you're dealing purely with, you know, I'm depressed or I want to deal with my son better, um, the more personal issues. So your job is to help the organizational context, which is, is very present oriented. Yes. So you have to stay in contact with your contract. Yes, yes. I, I think it's 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 really important. Even if I see that there is something more familiar, or for uh, for family constellations, uh, I would recommend uh, to do perhaps uh, family constellations, but not with me. I prefer that it would be another another person. So um, I'm more free to do the organizational work. Yeah. Even when I, when I work, for instance, in family systems, in family companies, that we have uh, both, uh, um, both systems working, I try to, to talk with them to see what they want to see. If I see that there is a lot of uh, family issues, um, I, I, I recommend uh, a family constellator uh, so they can do the family issues. Even I can be present, but just as a participant. Okay. And, uh, and after, I, I, I could uh, take care of, of the organizational uh, system. Even there is mixed. Uh, and now I can, uh, I, I realize that uh, it's possible to, to mix, even on orga organizational constellations. Some years ago, when I started, I was very much afraid of... Uh, um, setting up uh, the father and the mother of uh, a client because I thought that I was going um, directly to family constellations and uh, at, at this moment uh, I'm not afraid to do it I, I, I can do it and uh, but I stayed more in the organizational field so the client sees the relation with the father and mother for instance but in this in, in this area if uh, uh, we go to more personal, uh, sometimes I do uh, hidden constellations. So the client can do a process, looking to, the, uh, to both uh, system, but not exposing the client uh, to uh, the participants. Right, I mean, I remember you saying that at the very beginning of our conversation, you have to be very sensitive to the vulnerability of the client in their organizational context and not do anything that would make it hard for them to return. Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's always better uh, for me uh, uh, not doing than doing something. Uh, if I have any doubts, I don't do it. Um, and, and, and one thing that is really important and, and uh, in the trainings, I, I, I insist a lot of this, is that sometimes we are in an organizational constellation and we see that it's something uh, personal. 
or family. And the facilitator asks the, the client, uh, oh, we see that there is something family here. Uh, if you want, we can go through here in order to get uh, the authorization of the client. <clears throat> in my opinion, uh, this is a question that uh, we don't have to say because at that time, the, um, the client is not in the normal state. He is quite vulnerable. And if we ask this question, the client will say always yes. And sometimes uh, because he wants to, to solve the problem. I remember uh, with one client that uh, uh, he saw that there was something uh, family and he wanted that I, want, I, I went there and I said, no, I, I will not go because we are working in organizational. And he was uh, very fed up with me. He left uh, the, the workshop um, very, very angry with me. And uh, three weeks after, he sent me an email uh, uh, giving thanks to me because he understood that he would expose himself with uh, some issues that he don't want to, to be. So we have to be very careful to do that. So it, it's always better if we have doubts, please don't do it. Yes. Um, I'm curious because you and I talked very briefly. There's probably not time to do the whole exercise. But everyone here is, you know, working in some capacity, um, even if they're taking time off from work to be a parent, uh, they're still working as a parent, but many people on this call are self-employed, they're practitioners, they work for other companies. Um, uh, you know, work is one of the, you know, one of the major contexts of our lives, right? That intimate relationships and sleep, right? <laughs> Um, and so, um, I'd be curious to you know, sort of turn it towards the people in this group, what you might say or offer from a constellation point of view, organizational constellation point of view, about us and our relationship to work, um, our, uh, our past with work and our future with work. Um, I'd, I'd be interested in hearing any, um, anything you have to offer us about that us to think about or um, chew on for ourselves okay if uh, perhaps um, we can do a small um, a small exercise and uh, I tried to do it in uh, I don't say five minutes ten minutes ten minutes uh, would be great yeah um, uh, so um, if you can uh, relax yourself and um, if you want to close your eyes and think on, on, on your uh, professional life and thinking of your professional life, uh, think on uh, three uh, persons or three events or uh, person and, and events that were important to arrive where you arrive today. But choose only three. It could be person, it could be events, it could be any that it was important in your, in your professional life. And if we go um, chronological, please uh, stand up uh, in front of the first one and look at that uh, person or, or event and remember what happened at that time. And remember uh, if it was easy, if, if it was uh, difficult, but mainly thinking of what you learn with that person or, or that event and uh, all the things that you learn and that you have in your uh, with you that you can bring to your future and you can use and perhaps you will use a lot in your future professional life and when you remember everything and you put 
all of you or all of that inside of you, you can say thank you to that person or that event. You can embrace that person or that event. Just keep this for you. And you also do a small um, back and you go to the other person and the other event. And look to this second person or second event. And remember what happened with him, with that person or with that event. How it was, what you learned. Perhaps there are things that you learned there that you don't remember anymore. Perhaps it was difficult, but perhaps all that difficulty was good for what to be more strong now in this life, in this present. Remember everything that happens there. And take all of that in your heart. And also say thank you to that person of that event, of all that you learn and, and all that you take for your present life. Now please go to the third person or the third event. And look and remember what happened with him, with that person, with that event, what you learned, how important it was for what you are now. Everything you learned with that person or that event. And keep all that with you. Put everything on your heart. Even the hard things that were good for what you are now. And say thank you for all that you learn and what you learn with this person or event. And now you can um, give your back to this three persons or event and feel this three persons or event on your back. And feel all the strength that they gave to you in this, in all your life. And what you learn with all of them and how strong you are now because of them. And now you look to the future and try to do one step further, leaving those three people, those three personal or events on the back of you. And you go one step to the future. And you can look to your future. You can open your eyes and see your future with all the background that is with you. Okay, it was quick, <laughs> but we didn't have much time. That's wonderful, though. I hope it was useful. 
Would anyone, does anyone have a, a share or a question following that? Um, you've got Cecilia right here. Um, you know, something that came up for you in the, in that little um, guided experience. Yeah, Kalita, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> I actually ended up, I didn't mean to, but I went consistently backwards in time um, instead of forwards. And it ended up that all three of the events and the, the relationships, really, the relationship events, were all in the moment incredibly traumatic. <laughs> there wasn't one that felt good at all. And I wouldn't be who I am or do the work that I do without any of them. It was um, good. Thank you, Kalita. Yeah. Yes, uh, Kimberly, uh, you're unmuted. Oh, hi. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. So um, I, I just allowed the three events to come to me rather than trying really hard to think of it. And as I went through each one, the thing that tied them all together is that they all had the quality of, um, of uh, I didn't choose these. I didn't, I, there was no effort. It was as if each of these was showing me that every evolutionary step in my life has occurred of its own and that my thinking that I can direct or control is not proven by my experience, that these major shifts have all had their own momentum and their own way of being. And I've simply endured and they have taken me where they want me to be. And that what I call my life right now is actually not mine. Like, it's just a kind of like, I can gracefully surrender because I'm in the midst of a shift. And so let, may I please know that yet this is yet another gonna just another thing that is of itself going to bring me where it's meant to be so may i please uh gracefully surrender so that was super helpful thank you so much thank you totally. and then i see amanda's hand going up, going up. amanda oops thank you um yeah thank you very well um i Part, I enjoyed that and I noticed that one of the incidents is fairly recent and I felt like oh I was like oh there's a lot unfinished it kind of like brought up anxiety of like oh I, I think I need to do more it was a very traumatic incident and I was thinking like oh I need to do more it brought up like kind of like opened up some yeah difficulty for me so yeah I'm curious any thoughts about that Cecilio Hmm. The point is that uh, all the all the what happens uh, with us, uh, even uh, dramatic, is uh, we cannot change anything, but you can change the way you can see it, and what uh, was, and what you can uh, use of that event in your present life what you learn with that for doing perhaps different things at this moment. And the point, the point is exactly, exactly that is uh, accept what happened because that we cannot change. Mm -hmm. What we can change is how we see it, how we perceive. And if uh, you detain yourself, perhaps you can find uh, good things there that makes you more strong and like you are at this moment. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Uh, yeah, big question here right at the end. So thank you for sharing that. It's an important question. Yeah. yeah. Um, before we wrap up, I do want to just say hello to a few people. Uh, in addition to Cecilio, I want to start out with just Betsy, who is one of our co-directors. Um, hi, Betsy. Hi, how are you? How are things going on the conference? 
Fantastic. We're getting so excited. We have a team of people who have really been with us for a year in a very dedicated way. We know all of you are with us. We can feel all the energy coming toward the conference. And uh, we're just uh, very excited. I think it's going to be really a beautiful and strong and clear event. We're so, we're so happy you're able to come, Cecilio, and that uh, that was important to us that you were able to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Betsy's been working really hard. So send grateful energy to Betsy. <laughs> you all. Look forward to seeing you all there. Yay. The <laughs> directors work very hard. hard. I know. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, and then um, we do have a couple of presenters here. Uh, Kimberly. Uh, Kimberly Cartwright is one of the presenters. Um, in a sentence, I know it changes every time, but what, what's the sentence this time, Kimberly? Uh, the sentence is, um, I, just because I'm so inspired by Cecilio, the sentence is, you know, even, even oppression. How is oppression showing up as making you who you are? And, and what, can, what meaning can we make from it that will take us where we want to be? Mm. So thanks, Cecilio, for the inspiration. And, and people are always showing up for me that, that help me to just open keep opening mm -hmm. thank you Kimberly. Really? um and i'm going to introduce karen in one second but am i missing anybody else here who's a presenter Hello, i'm here and I joined, I joined a little bit late i apologize that's all right can you share a sentence about your presentation that's coming up sure um uh, first i want to say thank you to cecilio mucho gusto i don't know i think you're uh, Spanish speaker, am I correct about that? <laughs> Spanish and uh, I'm Spanish and Portuguese. Que bueno, mucho gusto conocerte. Um, I so I am presenting, co-presenting with John Cheney, and we are doing uh, a 90-minute uh, workshop on Friday night on ethnocentric belonging. So we're going to look at what it means to belong to a particular uh, worldview, for lack of a better term, to to present it and um, uh, maybe take it home a little bit to the U.S. climate right now and uh, explore uh, the polarity and polarization that's going on. We're not going to uh, look at, at more than the, the polarity itself, and we're going to see, we're going to feel into using Milton Bennett's model of um, intercultural um, sensitivity as a framework to feel into. and. Um, we are very excited and I'm going to be 10 hours jet lag because I'm coming straight from Morocco, two weeks from Morocco. So go gently on me, please. Okay. <laughs> Good to have you, Celia. Thank you very much. I'm glad you were able to make it. Yes, I'm very excited. Thanks. Yeah. And then um, Karen, say a word about what you're presenting and then say a word about the conference and how to register. And I'll pop up a, a screen uh, when you dive into that. Yes, um, I am Karen Carnabucci. I'll be presenting on Sunday on Introducing Family and Systemic Constellations to Your Corner of the Universe. And uh, what I can tell you today is that I'm a missionary of sorts in terms of I really am always looking for ways to introduce this method, which is, of course, experiential, and uh, look at how we can answer that question about how do you explain an experience? And how do you explain an experience that can be really valuable to you um, in a way that uh, attracts people to the experience? So I have many exercises, um, vignettes uh, coming from my work. I'm also a psychodramatist on how to show, uh, tell, explain, demonstrate pieces of constellation and why they can be valuable to you, particularly related to newcomers. So it can be also growing your business, growing your practice. Wonderful. Thank you, Karen. And then say a word about how to register, and I'm going to share the screen. Yes. Well, for those of you who have not registered or have friends and colleagues who are interested, a registration is still going on. Um, people can register for the, the full conference. We have a pre-conference that is exceptional. We have one and two day registrations available for people who cannot come. 
uh, the whole time, but really want to be there. I will say that Cecilio is presenting on Saturday, October 7th, and um, that would be ideal for somebody who was only able to come for one day. But lots of choices. Best way to register is to go to nascconstellations.org, and um, there's registration information right there. You can register online. You can also reserve your room online. I just received some information that there will be a limited amount of cots available for people who would like to share free to a room. So if you know of somebody that has some financial concerns, that's another opportunity to save money and be there. Great. And my uh, email is right there, realtruecaren at gmail.com. If anybody wants to communicate me with me about anything, I'm glad to answer it. Thank you. I, I didn't uh, say so, but Karen is also the marketing chair on the steering team. So she's been hard at work as well. So the whole team has been working hard for well over a year to bring this, con this conference to all of us. And just a, a tiny correction, it's NAS Constellations. Don't stick in an extra C. Um, uh, 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 it stands for North American Systemic Constellations.org. Um, and you will find everything you need there. I hope all of those of you who have not registered um, decide to come. It'd be really nice to have you. Um, so to wrap it up, Cecilio, mm, mucho gusto. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your help um, and having you here. Um, in addition to the, the brilliance of your approach and your client focus, which I really appreciate, um, you just have a warm place for me. You bring a lot of warmth to this work um, and a real sense of integrity and authenticity. And I really appreciate that about you. And I can't wait to have a beer with you in Virginia um, and with um, uh, many of the rest of you as well. Um, any last thoughts, Cecilio, before you uh, sign off? So just to say uh, thank you. Um, and uh, even that uh, I could prove what I was saying because uh, it, this small meditation that we did, uh, a lot of people have very different uh, uh, feelings. That's, that's what I was saying, that we, we never know what's inside of the client. So that's, that's good for that. And uh, I'm very happy to, to go to the, to the conference and I hope to, um, to do a, a good workshop and to have time to chat with uh, everybody and uh, ex exchange a lot, a lot of ideas and see other facilitators. See you then. Great. Thank you. And I noticed one or two people just signed on. There can always be confusions about time zones. If you contact, I'll be sending out uh, this recording to everybody who RSVP'd. If you didn't RSVP to me directly, find me somehow, lnips at gmail.com, and uh, I'll make sure you get the recording. And um, many blessings. Um, have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you for coming, and hope to see you in a couple of weeks in Virginia. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, Leslie and Cecilia. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs>